please welcome Jamie Cato. Evening all. I thought it was a tent which had like 25 people in it. I hadn't actually come out here before. Okay, different prospect. So we've only got half an hour today. <clears throat> so I want to do something short and sweet, like my lovemaking. <laughs> I thought in the short time that we have, uh, what could we do that would be the most practical, the most um, stripped of all the sort of dolphins and rainbows and anything that comes with it, just a concrete, practical thing that I believe if we just did this one thing could create the most planetary change and joy and inspiration um, collectively. There's one skill, I feel, that could turn all of our black and white into color. That got your attention, didn't it? This skill is based around the idea that the body is the most incredible self-mending, self-healing thing we know we have in, on the whole planet is a body. When you scratch the uh, skin magically over a period of short time, it, it mends itself over. If you break a bone, it mends itself. The body is constantly scanning for bacteria and viruses. It's making its own drugs all the time, secreting stuff, mixing it together, administering it to us in the perfect quantities, day and night. It's this, like Deepak Chopra says, it's an exquisite pharmacy. It's the most amazing self-mending, self-rejuvenating thing. The great discovery that I've made and forgive me, but it is always in these situations my job to come and sit places and state the obvious. The body is not only doing that self-cleansing, self-mending thing on the physical level. It's also trying to flush out that great big constipated lump of emotional, overreactive, triggery, ugh that we all carry in kind of a pillar down here. Does that make any sense? Do you know about this pillar? If you've read Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, he talks about the pain body. That for all of our adventures and missions into love and peace and doing the right thing and ecologically sustainable, no matter what our positive intentions are, while we're humans on this earth plane, it seems that part of the game is that for the first 10 or 20 years of our life, we accumulate a great big constipated lump of emotional, unexpressed ugh, and neediness and rage and triggery stuff, and very young, it feels very young, triggery stuff, and it only takes somebody to come along and treat us unjustly, or betray us, or do something that wasn't expected, and suddenly that reaction happens in us, doesn't it? That it's, it's like much bigger than disproportionate to what just happened. They could have done something quite small, but the reaction is like huge. I mean, right now, we're living in this great time for us in history where at least the people in this time, we're not living in a place where bombs are dropping, where we have to walk eight hours to get our clean water every day. We're in this incredible position. Yet we will screw up a whole day or a whole relationship over the tone of voice you just spoke to me in. <laughs> yes? Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> so we've all turned into these unbelievable, overreactive, bridge-burning divas. And that's what the send button in the email is for. <laughs> send. <laughs> yeah. All because of this, these explosions that go off in us. Sometimes it's a volcanic explosion, sometimes it's a contracted explosion. But these things, these triggers that go off in us when somebody else treats us a certain way, they feel so excruciatingly uncomfortable that usually in our culture, we will do anything but feel that feeling. We jump straight into some external battle to make you wrong, to fight you, to control you, to manipulate you, anything to set it up and change it so that I don't have to feel this. And our whole culture is actually built on this self-abandonment 
that any time we feel something uncomfortable, whether you did it to me or it just came up in me, we want to move quickly away from the discomfort towards the comfortable. We've been sold this fake myth that life is all about moving away from the uncomfortable towards the comfortable. The problem with that is that the place where we get to move that great big lump of constipated, yucky, overreactive emotional stuff out is in the uncomfortable. So if we're living our lives constantly running away from the uncomfortable towards the comfortable, we're going to constantly perpetuate having a bigger and bigger and bigger lump of constipated, reactive, disempowering, bridge-burning stuff in us. So what has turned my life from black and white to color, and what I want us all to do for the rest of our lives after we leave this tent, is to dare to try a new way where we change this constant battling with the external and fighting people and blaming people and condemning and pushing away and retreating every time we get one of those explosions we don't like. Instead of always going into why the external is the reason and to change our focus from the external to suddenly turn it round and become fascinated with the thing that just erupted in me instead of in rejection of it. That is a massive change, and I think the biggest change for planetary change we can make collectively and individuals, as individuals is to change our fascination from all these external things we're fighting and that trigger us and make us feel bad, and suddenly find a fascination when you hurt my feelings, find a fascination with, whoa, my solar plexus is going crazy now you just did that. I hate you. I want to kill you. And then you can walk somewhere else and be fascinated to actually rather than reject that feeling, go, no, no, I can't feel it, to go deeper into it, as if you're a wine connoisseur or something, you want to actually taste every atom of it. You want to know exactly what color it is, what shape it is, where in my body is it, what texture is it. The exact opposite of what we do these days, which is do anything to not feel it. <laughs>